Hi guys, this is Dr. Pangelinen, and in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the third skill module of the Special Olympics Young Athletes Program, Balance and Jumping. At the end of this lecture, students will understand the activities in the Balance and Jumping skill module. You'll learn how to observe children's movements while they are performing the different activities in this module. And for students in groups five through eight, you will develop activities to build upon the skills trained in this module. The goals for this module include helping children become more proficient at balancing and jumping. Balance skills are needed for many activities in sports. Good balance skills are necessary for climbing stairs and other objects, walking or running on uneven surfaces, or even different surface types like grass or sand. Good balance helps children develop confidence for more complex skills like leaping and jumping. The picture on the right shows all of the activities for this module. I'll go through each of these activities in terms of the goals and modifications or progressions. We will then watch videos of children doing each activity. The first activity in this module is called balance beam. For this activity, the goal is to walk heel to toe, first along a chalk or tape line, and once the children become comfortable with the activity, they can practice on a low balance beam or rope. The activity guide includes suggestions for group play. The children can walk along a line or balance beam while balancing a bean bag on their head, shoulder, elbow, or another body part. This is kind of like the walk tall activity in the walking and running module. Now let's watch a video of a child participating in this activity. In the video, the coach set up a low foam balance beam between two cones. The child is able to walk heel to toe along the balance beam and touch the cone at the other end. He raises his arms up a little to help maintain balance, but overall doesn't seem to have any difficulty with this activity. The second activity is called follow the coach. This activity was described in the overview lectures on the Special Olympics Young Athletes Program. The goal of this activity is to copy the coach's movements and body positions. Coach can do movements that require balance, such as standing on tiptoes or heels, standing with one foot directly in front of the other, or standing on one foot. The activity guide provides tips for observation. The tip suggests that the coach monitor the child's progress at the beginning and every four weeks of the program to see how the child improves. The child can use the Special Olympics Young Athletes Assessment or a checklist to determine which skills need more practice before moving on to harder skills. Let's watch a video of children doing this activity. The coach first starts with moving his hands down to the floor and then up to the ceiling. Next, the coach practices balancing on one foot. He puts his arms out to the side to show the children how to use their arms for balance. The little girl in red had difficulty balancing on one foot and uses her arms a little too much, which may have actually thrown off her balance. Each child used a different strategy to maintain balance on one foot. The coach then takes a big step into a lunge position. The kids cake much smaller steps, which are easier to hold and maintain balance. Then the coach marches in place. The little girl in red has a hard time staying on her spot. The third activity is called step, jump, and grab. The goal for this activity is to practice stepping up and jumping down while trying to grab an object like a scarf or beanbag. The children can step onto a block or low beam and then jump down onto a floor marker. The activity guide provides a few examples of progressions for this activity as the children become more proficient. The first is to try to have the kids jump onto a marker placed further from the block. The children can jump up high and try to grab the scarf as they jump down. The children can jump down from higher surfaces. Let's watch a video of children doing this activity. The 
first child is able to step onto the block and grab the scarf while jumping down. The second child starts with her two feet on two floor markers and had to jump with both feet to grab the scarf. This is a great way to help kids learn to do two foot takeoffs and landings. The fourth activity is called rock hop. For this activity, the coach or parents will set up blocks or floor markers and pretend that they are rocks in the river. The children pretend that there is a crocodile in the river and that they need to only step on rocks, which are the blocks or floor markers, without falling into the water. The activity guide suggests that as children improve, the coach or parent can place the blocks or markers further apart or use blocks or markers of different sizes and shapes. This will make balancing more difficult. The children can only cross the river using one color of blocks or markers to help develop their cognitive skills. There's also an option for group play. Children can work in pairs and hold hands to get across the river. Let's watch a video of children doing this activity. In the first example, it looked like the coach was trying to be a crocodile. The coach set up markers in a straight line and the children must only step on each marker with one foot to get to the balance beam at the other end. You can see that the child in yellow has a particularly difficult time doing this task. The task could be made easier by placing the markers closer together or spreading them wider so that the children can step more naturally. You can see that the floor markers slide on the wood floors, so ideally the markers should be taped down or rubber floor markers could be used. The fifth activity is called Trees in the Forest. For this activity, the children stand with their feet on floor markers in a line or in a circle and pretend to be trees. A child, parent, or coach will walk or run through the trees, fanning them with the scarf. The trees are encouraged to bend and sway in the breeze. The goal of this game is to maintain balance while swaying. As children improve, they can stand on one marker with both feet or on top of a block. Let's watch a video of children playing this activity. The coach creates a breeze with paper plates instead of scarves. The children sway their arms and bodies. The sixth activity is called leaping lizards. The goal of this activity is to practice jumping and leaping from one floor marker to the next. Jumping is when you start with two feet together at takeoff and two feet together at landing. Leaping is when you take off with one foot, then land on the other foot or both feet. As children improve, the coach or parent can encourage the children to run forward and leap into the air over or onto a floor marker. Let's watch a video of a child doing this activity. Here the coach set up floor markers between two cones. The child jumps from one marker to another, keeping his feet together at takeoff and landing. He has a little difficulty with this activity, but takes his time completing the activity. The seventh and last activity is called jumping high. The goal of this activity is to get the children to jump or leap over a dowel, rope, or other obstacle. The height of the obstacle is raised as the child improves their skills. Let's watch a video of a child doing this activity. The child uses the cones for balance as he jumps over the first obstacle. The coach holds the cones steady. As the child progresses, he should be encouraged to jump without using the cones for stability. The activity guide provides several tips for observations for these last, more difficult skills. Be consistent with verbal cues and demonstration. Consistency and repetition help children learn and master new skills. New jumpers will take off and land with one foot leading the other. Jumping and landing with two feet together at takeoff and landing takes time and practice. Okay, in preparation for the quiz, you all should know the goals and modifications for each of these activities. For those of you in groups five through eight, you can meet with your group to pick one of the activities in this module that you would like to modify for your group project. You can then change the equipment or instructions or rules, but the general goal of the activity should be the same as the original activity. 
Your task card will need to incorporate simple images and simple text to describe your new activity. Please make sure to follow the examples provided on Canvas based on the activities in the Foundational Skills module. These examples will help you understand the expectations, goals, and grading for your group project. Please feel free to email me if your group would like to meet to discuss your activity in advance, or if you have any questions about the material covered in this lecture.